Well, hello, everybody, and it's good to hear from many of you. Uh, many of you have been writing and sending your regards this way, so we thank you very much for that. I wanted to say to you that this is not a coronavirus message because there's a billion of them out there, so we do, don't need to do that anymore. If you can't get the information you need by uh, reading, by the uh, television, by all the other things that are available to you, then um, we just are wanting to actually talk to you about you. We wish you are doing well. We hope you are doing well. And with the guidance of God and with the guidance of all the government officials, even though sometimes they can be uh, out of hand, still, they are our leaders and they tell us how things are. Hopefully everyone is doing well. I just want to tell you to be calm, be peaceful, follow the rules. You don't want to expose yourself to anything that you don't have to. There is um, reasons for everything. And this is a time for you to do some introspection. This is a time for you to do some uh, thinking about things, praying, mo meditating, taking care of personal businesses in your home and with your family. And I know that can be difficult because being stuck at home with your family is not always the best thing. But if you're having trouble with that, make sure you have a family meeting. Sit down. Remember, communication is what is needed at this time. Communication to everyone, your family, your friends, all those that you care about. You may not be able to see them in person, but you will be able to get in touch with them in some way. So keep in contact. Do not feel like you are so far away you can't talk to them. But remember to send your love, send your comfort, send everything you can. And if you are having a bad time, perhaps talk to your friends that will help comfort you. You know who they are and you know what they're doing. So love one another at this time, communicate strongly at this time. Keep in touch, but uh, not uh, in physical contact because Let's be safe. I know many out there are saying that this is just another flu. This is just another whatever. It, it is really not. And that is why the, there is so much hype about it. The whole world is closed down. Do you think it's just another flu? Do you think it's just another conspiracy theory? A lot of you do. And there may be some conspiracies going on uh, because of it. But let me tell you, it's a time of awakening. It's a time to bring yourself into a positive attitude. It's a time not to dwell on the negative, but to dwell on as much positivity as possible. To dwell on moving your mission forward so that when there is no more... Uh, of these times, when the, you, there is no more social distancing, you can actually be someone better, a greater example, a greater person in this world, a greater light, a better, a better way of communicating with the world. That's why I say keep communicating. It's not a time for stopping all communications, but it's a time to continue to communicate, but also a time to better yourself, a time to make yourself into the person that you need to be, into the kind of person that loves unconditionally, the kind of person that can handle what is coming next, because there are things coming. And that has been promised and still will happen. So if you think this is over, with the virus, no. But 
if you think that you can succeed through all things, yes. Positivity is the way to go, and positivity is the right direction. There's no use filling your head with conspiracy theories when they do no good. They're not the truth in, in any way. They're just a camouflage of what is underneath, what the negativity has to offer. They want you to misdirect you so that you're unprepared for the truth. So do not dwell on these conspiracy theories or these negativities because it doesn't do any good. Positivity is what's going to bring you through them. Knowing God is what's going to bring you through them. Knowing what is right is going to bring them through them. Knowing what they lie about is not going to help you. So remember that. Keep, your, keep yourself positive. Keep yourself above it. Keep yourself away from all that. It may be very interesting, and you may go, hmm, that's interesting. I wonder if it's true or not. Yes, but why fill your head with things you don't need? Fill your head with the positivity, with what you are going to do in the future, with all the things that you need um, right now. I know some of you say, oh, it's all goody two-shoes with you. It's all positivity, love, and light. You better believe it is. Because that's not any bull. That's fact. That is truth. That is forward motion and movement. The negativity is stifling. The negativity is backwards movement. So yes, you better believe I'm all love and light and compassion and, and whatever it takes. We all have negativity. We all have that within us and it all comes out every now and then. And we are human and that's the way it is. But let us move forward together and let us see the future together. Max, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I will say a few things and then you will um, reflect on it. Uh, you could reflect on it. So I will start with, uh, with a couple of pessimistic jokes and um, they kind of, <laughs> they kind of um, allow us to relate to the situation in a, in a, in a lighter way. So one is that, um, quote, things will be fine, just not soon and not for us. Uh, and I think it's very true. I think that's very true. And uh, John Lennon was, was talking about it. Basically, he knew that the brighter future is coming. It's just not, not soon and not for him. And, and I feel pretty much the same. I, I see that brighter future. It's, it's visible already. It's, it's already shining. It's just uh, not yet. Uh, so my understanding is that the brighter future is uh, so bright it, it, it's not for us for us it is we are hybrids we are hybrids we are in the most interesting turning point <clears throat> and this most interesting turning point is right now right here and that's why we are here because we are experts in turning points we're not experts in bright future no we are we're experts in turning points and uh, it's not even for us to to worry about the bigger picture. I mean, we should worry about bigger picture, we should worry about conspiracies, but most of the work is to be done on yourself. That's how we change the, the matrix by changing ourselves. Remember, Neo, uh, all Neo need, needed to, to, to do was to change himself to be able to transform the matrix, and that's the main lesson. We need to change ourselves to be able to transform the matrix. We are catalysts um, we are um, yeah those who promote the change yeah we are the ones who bring the light and help the transformation of the of the matrix and it's all an illusion anyway but it's an illusion which is very sophisticated and uh, we, we are needed here on the ground to help to transform it, basically. We change, we transform the illusion into a brighter one. 
and the old world, I believe it's, it's gone, it's gone. And I remember in the old world, uh, lots of people were busy with very weird um, activities, like hunting for pleasure, or, uh, yeah, or many other, I mean, everything which was advertised was kind of bogus. So I think that's all gone. I think that's not coming back. Uh, some some things will come back for, for a short while, but I don't think that old world is coming back at all. I think we already are past the, the, the point of no return. So, so my main message is, which I don't know what I'm talking about, but I do know in a way that it's, the world is changing and the main work is to, to change yourself in a harmonious way. So it is inner transformation, which should be the focus. And what I noticed is people are awakening. Lots of people are awakening. And uh, also people are really paying attention to what, what is being said. In the past, it was impossible to get through. And now it's very easy to get through. People really pay attention. They're really awakened and they pay attention to what is happening. So now when I say something, people hear. And I think that's a great time. I don't think it will last for, for, for a long time, but now is like, if there is some sense in someone's mind, they can say it and people will hear, people will listen. And also I think that now is the time for, for action. Uh, not for everybody, because some people are observers, some people have to act inside, but some people can now act outwardly. So now is the time for um, people to actually, for light workers to actually shine. And, uh, at least for me, it, is, it was a really busy month. Uh, I was really excited. It was really interesting. Like before that, I was like thinking that the life is boring and there is nothing to do. And whatever I do, nothing, nothing happens. There is no, no response. And now it's completely different. I, whatever I, I do and whatever I say actually makes huge difference. Uh, so I just want to share Maybe for some of you also, action is, is, uh, is good. So think what, what you can do and also realize that it's almost impossible to fail, actually. I think there is so much attention from the other side, from aliens and spirits. Uh, and they live um, in a different time zone. They live in a different timing. So uh, you might think that they're too busy with other stuff, but basically they can manipulate time so they can get to you when you need it. Everybody will get enough attention because they can concentrate all like all universe can focus on us because now I think there is the focal point on, on the planet and lots of global universal galactic consciousness is, is actually capable to focus on us and give us help. So when, when you're desperate, look around usually as a rule there is um, a solution and there is help in 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 the hand reach like very near you just need to be open to that so there is lots of angelic guidance spiritual guidance alien guidance and and, and actual help all right the second joke was a person comes to the mountain and asks god um, God, tell me what's the, my, what's the plan for my life? And God answers, sorry, Brian, I really didn't think you will make that far. Uh, but how about you go get some ice cream? And Brian excited goes and um, thanks God and goes get to get some ice cream. So basically, the message here is that we might think there is a plan for our individual actions, but actually it's quite possible that freedom of choice is primary here, that there is a general plan that will have some excitement, will have some exciting trials and uh, lessons, but uh, we still have lots of opportunity for, for free choice. And uh, 
it's impossible to fail here. You just choose, just, just the advice, my advice would like do the choices, make the choices. And surprisingly the beings and consciousnesses on the other side will make sure you'll get to the right place anyway. Because the main mistake is not to make a choice. So I, I, I recommend, my, my recommendation is to make choices and actually go and do something inside, in, inside your consciousness, uh, consciousness and outside of your body, like do actual action. Talk to people, start things, do things, react to things, um, be active. And I think that's about it. But I, I, I like conspiracy theories. I think they, they, uh, they are much more true than uh, whatever is the consensus. But as Jim said, it really doesn't matter what's the, uh, what's the ultimate answer because it's all an illusion anyway. What matters is how do you relate to it, what you do now under pressure, what do you do now under circumstances. That's the most important thing. I think I'm done. I'm passing the microphone to Jim. Well, some of that, I, I enjoyed hearing that. That was good. I, I just want to add to, to the messages that you are in charge now. Uh, during this period of time, there's no one actually telling you uh, that you have to go to work. There's no one, unless you have a service-oriented a job. Some of you are doctors, nurses, uh, people that have service industry related jobs and you still have to work. But those of you that don't have to work at this time, you can decide for yourself how to use your time and make the best use of it. I know that there will be days where you don't feel like doing anything. That's fine. We all have those days. I have those days. Uh, but remember, when you do feel like doing something, to make it something that is positively driven, to make it something that will make a difference in the future for yourself, and, uh, or your family, or whatever. You know the best choices for you. You know the best things to do for you and your families. So that, this is a time for good choices, you know? You have to understand uh, this is a, actually a little bit of a test for many of you that are with your families at home uh, to keep peace, to understand how peace is kept so that you can be a good example of that in the future. Uh, keeping the peace in the home is not easy. <laughs> I know that, especially if uh, the kids are riled up or whatever. But sitting everybody down and having a family talk can really help so that everyone gets to communicate. Everyone hears each other. Everyone listens to one another. Make sure everyone's listening. But um, thank you, Max, for all your information. I, I think that was good. If there's anybody that needs to talk, um, send an email to one of us. Is that all right with you? Yep, email, Facebook, Messenger are fine. So that uh, if there's any major problems, I know I have a lot of people that are emailing now already. So uh, don't just send me off something frivolous, but if there is a problem, I'd like to hear from you and I'd like to help you with it. So, uh, that's all I have to say for now. Yeah, I just remembered like um, I was in trouble. I just made it and there was no place to live. And um, uh, it was Moscow and I didn't have much money. And I just remember that I had a, an uncle, which I, I always was afraid of him. He was like big and uh, too loud for me. And his jokes were like, too rough for me, but I asked him, and surprise, he had an empty apartment, which which we, you, my wife and I used. It was like 1986, I think, 1986. So, um, just open your awareness. I mean, if you look around, there is always help. 
Uh, and if you don't know how, know how to get help, try to help someone and surprise by helping someone, you open a lot of opportunities. So go help others and you will find that that is the biggest way that open the door for, for getting help for, for yourself. And with that, I send you the, uh, go ahead. Do you want to say something? Yeah, I was saying, if you have gifts like healing and uh, things of this nature that you're not, you feel like you're not able to use right now, you're still able to use them. Send healing to Mother Earth. Send healing out to the world. Send, send your gifts out to the world right now for healing and for uh, the comfort of the world. You say you're, uh, you're not able to go to Reiki share, not able to do Reiki right now or do any healing, but you can because you can send these things out to the world and they will fill, they will feel them. They will know that uh, you are doing it. And also, it, as you keep practicing your special gifts, as you keep practicing them, they get stronger and they open up other areas of the mind. They open up other areas of your psyche for other gifts to come through. So do not stop using your gifts at this time. This is a time for them to get really attuned. This is a time for them to, you to work on them. If you think you can't send it out to the world, think again. You can send your gifts out, healing, your psychic energies. You can understand what's going on. Uh, practice, use these things so that they can be stronger whenever that you are allowed whenever you're allowed to make contact so but continue to keep using your gifts do not stop and now i will do the closing chant keep breathing breathe consciously put your palms on your heart <laughs> Use your light language as much as possible during this time, too. It helps you to pray for yourself, for others, your family, for the world. Use your light languages. Uh, Jim, give some, some light language blessing. I will. I'm going to do an angelic blessing because that's what they're telling me to do. Kirashanzutu Arunai Kararandi Fasutura. Irandi Kuya Shashanzuvanina. Batitaro Rendevusiti SE. Canote for Shishunda. See a sensi gasivandi taramon no moody. Ararandi carataka coriatari, kiriana mono. So shuns of ocean vadi tu. Stila, monsunzi, ki. Here a coram voci shinjani. The bread of onju shunjin duretira. Brando, corirandi vici via. I don't like gaiji. I didn't gay one do it. Yeshua, oh yes. Amen. I would like to invite uh, Pienti Mokenjin to get uh, some answers. Who? Pentim or Kenjin? Who's that? Pentim? Oh, Pentim. Yeah, Pentim or Kenjin is the king of error. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, Kenjin or uh -huh. Pentim. Yes, uh -huh. all right. 
Let's see who is available. Okay. We're getting some feedback on your mic. Oh, thanks. I'll turn it off. Greetings, this is Ken Jean. Ken Jean, thank you for coming, welcome. Uh, I'm Max. Um, do you have any messages, what's new? There is a lot new for us. Of course, in our world, there are many new things. We are setting up more hybrid stations for the children of hybrid families. But other than that, we are opening up the planet for greater communications, especially with uh, intergalactic communications and questions about the law of, the, of the, our galaxy. These are important times because the, our galactic laws must be understood for people to behave themselves properly at this time. I, I believe that many of our courses that we have been presenting to intergalactic beings have been very helpful in maintaining peace within your solar system and within the galaxy. Other things that are happening, we see what is happening on your world and we see what is happening in your solar system. We uh, cannot agree with it completely, but we do understand their logic. And that is what they basically use, is logic and not necessarily great emotional uh, clarification. And so with what is happening, it is meant to happen at this time so that they can understand um, many things. You are to understand at the, this time, the awakening of your planet the awakening of many peoples. But the awakening is not over yet. It is just beginning. It is only at a very early stage of awakening for your peoples. There will be much more in the future and much more happening on your world coming down uh, through time. We being of a different time and place understand uh, that this is a little cryptic, but you must trust us that your people will awaken in time. The ascension process is not over and it will continue. It will have its bumps and it will have its times when it seems a little dim, but it will continue. It, it cannot be stopped at this time. And so we will support it in every way that we can through your peoples and through your governments. We speak to you daily, the Pleiadians of different uh, statures and ilks speak to your people every day. Pleiadian councils, Pleiadian kings, Pleiadian um, aristocrats. And we will continue to do that. We also welcome the Orions to speak and the Yu-Yil and those of them that are willing to speak on behalf of your people to your people. Uh, we welcome all these informations. We pray that they are positive and they are true. Remember, there are different perceptions from different species of what is happening on your world. And that will come through as well. They will have many different ideas about how to rule or govern your world during this time. They will have all kinds of ideas of what they believe is happening. But remember, 
look around you and understand your own perception of the world and put it into perspective with those of the aliens. They cannot be human. They cannot understand human yet. But yet, they will try to give you the best responses and informations as possible. And they are at goodwill doing so. So remember, listen carefully. Use your perception to know what is true about what they are saying. It is not that they are trying to deceive anyone, but they are trying to say what they need to say from their standpoint, from their perception and point of view. Remember, your point of view matters as well. Do not take all information at, at face value. You must think for yourself as well. That is part of this human condition, is you must be yourselves. You must know yourselves, and you must continue to grow and be the best person that you can be. So as you are growing, you may have very differing opinions to the aliens, or may see them as being harsh sometimes, or being judgmental even. But remember this, do not be judgmental in return. Listen carefully and take what they have to say and listen to what it is that they are saying. It may be something of positivity that you can glean from it. We are only trying to send the best of the best to your worlds. And please be aware that that still may have many flaws. But we do love and understand you and are praying for you. We don't understand you completely, of course, but at this point we see an understanding from our point of view, as we would say. And so we would like to bring the greatest understandings to you. Is there any questions, Max? Oh, thank you. Um, I understand that um, Earth and um, air are magically, mystically connected in, uh, in, uh, in their developments. So it looks like there is like a certain link in, in the creation which cre uh, links those two planets. Yes. Think, uh, originally they were the one planet, then they split. So they, there is like uh, quantum entanglement. So my question is, um, how do, does the change in, in Earth uh, affect the, the change in, in era? We follow the changes in Earth very closely. But yes, there are, there are similarities in the way that things are happening. Remember, our planet has gone through a very similar kind of ascension a while ago. It, it is not happening again yet, but there will be another ascension for us into the next dimension. But it is not yet. But we can understand your ascension because it was not that long ago for us to have forgotten all the things that happened during it. And many similarities have taken place in your world as took place in ours. So we do feel that we have a, a little bit greater understanding of how your world is progressing. So how did your ascension happen? Did the people survive it? Uh, did the people- Of course. Of course, we would not be here if our people did not survive. The ascension was successful. It took a long time, just as yours will as well. You have predicted that it will be a short ascension, but it will not be a short ascension by the looks of it. How long did it take on, on, on era? Over a hundred years. So basically no one who started it survived it to, to see the end? Very few. So did the genetics change of the people? Some, yes. There is always change in genetics as time goes on. Even within a hundred year period, things change within the beings because 
when your when your networks and frequencies change very quickly then that means that the peoples on the planet must adapt to these changes also very quickly uh did did it did the ascension bring the telepathy was it there before and did it appear after during the ascension? It appeared after it appeared afterwards by about 30 years so the ascension wasn't caused by telepathy telepathy followed not preceded the ascension telepathy had something to do with it though telepathy was being born telepathy was being experienced by those that were ahead of the curve just as it is being experienced by those on your planet that are advanced but remember for all humans to catch up to be in one place, it will take a long time. Were there like, uh, was it assisted by uh, hybridization? It was, in some senses, assisted by a, the fact that our planet did have some hybridization. But yours has a great deal more hybridization than we had. Because your planet came about in specific ways differently from ours we did have a great deal of hybridization but not nearly as much as yours did because yours had the prophecies yours had advanced warnings yours uh many people were interested in before uh even uh civilization began to be historic right so how much of magic was involved in your ascension? Magic was not involved much in our ascensions, uh, just as it will not be a, that much involved in yours. There will only be a specific people that will be given the magic or uh, let them have the magic because it is very powerful and it will be something that only few will be able to manage properly the gods know these things like um some of my friends do the um rituals to transform the earth grid and harmonize the earth grid so i, I consider it magic that is a magic it, yeah it is very possible that this kind of magic everyone can do there is certain magics that Mother Gaia have given to the earth that all peoples will be able to do, but it is not of a great power. It is of not of a great creativity necessarily. Only few will be able to wield those kinds of powers. Um, there is a story that there is a certain uh, energy grid around the planet and it has to be restored for the ascension and certain pyramids and other artifacts are need to be activated for that so i consider that magic but obviously it's high technology as well mostly high technology but magic can be involved in repairing technology right i would say technology plus natural abilities of uh, transforming energies yes you, so are how much also being, you are also being helped by the Orions for some of this technology of, with the Stargates. They are the originators of them. And so they are the ones that know how to repair them. They know that technology inside and out. And they will upgrade it in time. But until they get them running, uh, your, uh, the Stargate system is, will not be fully operational right so how much did aliens uh were involved uh in your ascension that is a good question their history wrote, writes that our assistant our uh, the assistant people assisting people to our ascension were higher beings such as octorians and fandorians and syrians but they were not interactive with our culture, but they were interactive with our peoples through channeling and through um, psychological development. 
Okay. Uh, how much technology? How much was technology involved in your ascension? Technology is secondary to mental awakening. Mental awakening cannot be done with technology properly. It only awakens certain areas of the brain, but it does not um, promote the proper emotional responses. So with technology, improper illusions appeared. So we had to let it happen more generically, more organically. Uh -huh. Because it looks like um, we are on the verge of technological transformation of the species. We, you are, but it will not help in your ascension. The ascension is about awareness of outside worlds, of spirituality, of greater things than yourself. This technology will make you aware of some of that, but the spiritual essence is not available through technology. Um, yes and no, like, uh, the spiritual teachers, all, all of them are now available through internet. So internet yeah. greatly assisted us in uh, learning, learning about it. But, but that's now, an organic outcome of your society building, building it. It does not come from outer worlds. Right. But now, now it looks like um, uh, there are plans for unification of the planet through technology and um, uh, there is a, a great unification happening through internet and every house now happen. has smartphones everyone has smartphones so just a few years ago smartphone appeared and that transformed the world greatly so we are linked together much much more now so uh, technological transformation is clearly happening really really fast it has been predicted by prophecy that your world will unite in some ways. It will not always be a, a positive unity in some places, but it will grow. So how long ago was your ascension? It was a couple hundred years ago. Oh, well, that little. Yeah. Uh, was was it um, accompanied by wars? It was accompanied by many things. I do not want to say all the things that accompanied it because I would not want to give you any ideas on how things are going to go with your ascension. But it was difficult at places. All right. Uh, we have a prediction of four horses of apocalypse. Uh, war and um, natural disasters and famine so i am uh, i was reminded about it and i kind of look look at, at that um, remember and, uh -huh. yes you create your own reality and if you believe these things will happen or are they are if you believe they are to come to pass if a majority of your world believes in this it will come to pass because they have created it. Do not create negativity in the future. Try to be as positive as possible. Remember, you create the future, and it is not yet foretold exactly what that means. You, we do have an idea of what prophecy says, but prophecy is, can come about in many different ways, and can have a peaceful way of coming about or a violent way of coming about. So pray that it is more peaceful and that you uh -huh. do not bring upon yourselves these things. Okay. Um, I was um, um, looking for a planet, uh, which I remember from my dreams and my astral travels. And apparently it was Terra or Tara. Can you tell me more about Tara? Tara is a Pleiadian planet. It is inhabited by Pleiadians, and 
of many different species, but the original species there was the white Pleiadians or the very pale ones at best. They had color such as yellows, pinks and golds, and light greens and silvers. They, because the planet was rather a dark planet, and because of the suns, skin tones were lighter. Mm -hmm. This is also a planet where there is much going on at this time. Oh. They are re-evaluating themselves. You don't hear much about them. The, they are very advanced. They are more advanced than we are, actually, on ERA. They are very highly spiritual as well. But there are many species there now, not just one, or not just the white Pleiadians, but there are other forms of Pleiadians. There are Octurians. There are Ken Kendorans. Cure, other species, some of which you may not have heard of before. There mm -hmm. are even Eliashon Zendi and place, uh, peoples from uh, Andromeda there and Orion. It is a melting pot at this point because it is governed very well. And so the people like to visit there. It is a, actually a vacation spot for some because it is a beautiful planet. Even though it's on the darker side, there, because of the way the planet rotates, um, that is why it's darker actually, and it's a larger planet. But it is also a very advanced place and a very beautiful place. What's the star it belongs to? It, I do not know what you call it, but we call it Neshon. It's not one of the seven Pleiades? It is. Neshon, okay. Um, is it uh, also linked to the Earth uh, through, um, I would say, uh, the magical connections in the, matrix, in the matrix? They have not made those connections with your planet. Oh. But they see the, the, that the magic grows in your realm at this time. They are interested in it, but they already have their magic ahead of time. The higher the dimension, the, bet, the faster the magic comes through. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you being in third dimension, the magic comes through slowest. Okay, okay. Um. So where is Terra High? Is it um, in a different uh, dimension somewhere? Yes, it's in right on top of you. You okay. are in third dimension. Terra High is in the next dimension up from you. Okay. It is, remember this. There are many dimensions, one on top of each other on every planet. Mm -hmm. To get to the next dimension is to evolve into it. Remember this also. Light, gravity, and some forces are through every dimension. So gravity holds your planet uh, together in all dimensions. Light holds your planet together through all dimensions. No matter what portion of dimensions that you are in, your sun and all your planets are available in every one of these dimensions. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So uh, when your society ascended, did, did the planet change dimensions? Did it become higher dimensional? Yes. When you look at our planet from your planet, you will see the third dimension of it because that's where you live, between mm -hmm. the third and the fourth dimension. Because of that, you see third dimensional era. But we live on fourth dimensional era and there are still those that live in third dimensional era because they have not yet ascended. 
I there see. is always a break in the civilization when ascensions uh, occur because not always everyone is ready to ascend and some are left behind always are, are some people still ascending from third to the fourth and pop up on your four dimensional era they will come after death oh so they don't pop up alive not at this point they have not learned how to ascend that way they do not uh -huh. believe in that kind of ascension and so that is why they do not but did it happen during the ascension time there yes there were those like your tibetan monks that phased into a new dimension without leaving your planet they left Tabanya. they left through prayer spirituality meditation and time spent with god so many, that was my many years, are, many many years are required for that kind of ascension so that was my question people made it alive but rarely right yes but there will be a time on your planet where there will be a mass ascension it will happen but it is not yet so people will make it alive through the dimensions yes hmm. okay i think that's all i have do you have any we have like three minutes left if you have any closing words i would welcome that we are here to help we are here as a brother sister planet as you if you will to be of a guiding light to you and we have been talking through many on your planet we are part of pleiadian councils we are part of some of those that have actually incarnated as pleiadians on your planet do not take that lightly that is a huge sacrifice your dimension is very harsh and uncontrollable in many ways so we as volunteers to your world are trying to make a difference thank you very much you're uh, welcome can you give us a uh, a few words in your language. Tuota, tia shan shifia tata, freta aivor do ocean zes. Shan shifia tia kvira taprom. What it said, or what I had said, was in the coming days there will be much confusion, but the light, if you follow it, will lead you out of it and into solid contentment. Thank you. That's nice. Well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to talk to you again. And your um, message is very helpful. Thank you. And speaking to you gave me a great humble feeling. Much love. Much love. Hello? Hey, Jim, welcome back. Thanks.